everybody. Welcome back to my show, Dr. Lisa Forzani, aka The Cooking Cairo. We are here, it is fall, it is finally November, and you know what that means. We're into the crux of things with cooking. Nice warming, heartwarming foods, foods that make us feel good, foods that comfort us. So, today, what better comfort food do we have than chili. We're going to make a nice meat chili. We're excited to do this today. It is such a fantastic thing to make for your family. It goes a long way. It's fun. It's delicious. It freezes up nicely. You could use it anytime. So let's go. So where did chili start? That is very controversial, but an old legend holds that immigrants from the Canary Island came over and brought a recipe to San Antonio, Texas. So it seems like Texas is really where things come from in terms of chili. In the early 1700s, cowboys and pioneers used to make something called brick chili. So what they would do is they would take dry beef, they'd take chilies and all the ingredients and they would dry them out and actually make them into a brick. And then to recreate it, they would put hot water and boil it down and eat it and enjoy it. So everyone has their own little take on chili. I've been making chili since I was a kid. In fact, we had this great friend that was so thrilled with my chili, he even said it was better than Wendy's, which I hope so. All homemade ingredients and great vegetables and fresh vegetables. It is so delicious and you could do so many different spins on it. So let's talk about what I put in my chili and some other spins that you could also add to it. So I'm going to actually add a can of cannelloni beans, a can of red kidney beans. We're going to be sauteing onions, one medium onion, two or three balls of garlic. We're going to saute jalapeno pepper, chopped nice and fine, because I like a little kick to it. I chopped up a whole green on, uh, pepper, but I'm not real sure if I'm gonna put the whole thing in. We'll see. I had a couple tomatoes in the refrigerator that were not suitable for putting in a salad. They were just a little soft, but still fresh. So I'm gonna actually add that in as well. I like corn in my chili, so we're going to put in eight ounces of corn and then two tablespoons of both chili powder and cumin, a tablespoon of salt or less if you like, and then a tablespoon of pepper. We're going to use diced tomatoes, 15 ounces of diced tomatoes, and then we're going to use chopped tomatoes, 15 ounces as well. And we're gonna cook all that together for 20 to 25 minutes, and it is gonna be great. But don't forget about the beef. We gotta put in a pound of beef, brown that up nicely, make sure it's lean so it doesn't have a lot of fat in it, and you wanna break that up in the pan first, so let's go. Here we go. We put some extra virgin olive oil in the pan, but of course you could use canola oil, about two tablespoons. And now we're going to brown up and soften our vegetables first. Jalapeno. I actually used about a half of a jalapeno pepper and about three cloves of garlic and one medium onion. And we're going to use half, ah, we'll just use the whole pepper, what the heck. And now, like I said, I just happen to have these tomatoes, so we're going to throw those in too. And listen to it sizzle. At this point, the house smells incredibly decadent with the combination of the sauce and the onions caramelizing and the garlic caramelizing. And then of course you have that zing of spiciness with the green peppers and the jalapeno peppers. And the extra tomato that we had in here, we smashed it so that it really blended together and everything smells great, it looks great. And as you know, the Dutch oven is like the best thing to cook this in. You can cook it slow, make sure you eat constantly check on it that it doesn't burn on the bottom keep it on a nice low simmer and next we're going to add our the rest of our ingredients 
this is what it looks like as the vegetables are simmering at the bottom of our Dutch oven. And next, we are going to put one pound of very lean beef into our mixture. Next, we're going to put our one pound of beef into our pan. Now what you're going to do is break up the meat and let it brown for about six to seven minutes or so. Constantly break it up until it's in very small pieces. Right now we're letting our meat simmer down and really blend together with all those flavors which are going to taste so fantastic. Back as far as the 1900s, they've been having chili cook-offs. Have you ever been to a chili cook-off? Let me know, because I've been to chili cook-offs, and they're a lot of fun. I remember living in Georgia and going to one in a beautiful, beautiful town. I can't think of the name of it, but it was surrounded by mountainous rock, and it was a national park in Atlanta that was so much fun. And my favorite, of course, is Concarni, which is with meat, but also I want to let you know that you could actually make this with no meat, which I used to do a lot in school too. You could actually substitute the meat for other things like broccoli and corn and carrots and zucchini tastes great in that and serve it over rice. I like to serve my chili over rice. And we're just about ready to add all the other ingredients, everybody. We're getting there. Now that our meat is nice and sauteed and immersed in those wonderful flavors of pepper and onion and garlic, here we go. Our tomatoes, diced tomatoes, in you go. Our chopped tomatoes, in you go. Our red kidney beans, which we did drain and rinse off. And I love cannelloni beans either size. I happen to have the large ones. So we also rinsed them off. We drained our corn. And we have our chili powder. Cumin. Salt. And our pepper little black pepper. And we just mix this together and let it do its thing. 25 to 30 minutes we will be eating dinner. And it's gonna be awesome. I wish you guys were here and could just smell how fantastic this smells. And it looks so pretty now with the green peppers in it and the corn gives it a little bit of a color. So I just look at cooking as art, and this is a beautiful piece of art. some of the sides that we can serve with our chili. One of my favorites, of course, is cheddar cheese. I like whole milk sour cream. And we took a red onion and chopped it extremely fine, which is also another awesome side to put on here. And one other. Some broken up chips on the top is also a great favorite. And now you just have to enjoy it, either by itself or on a bowl of white rice. so much for all of you for joining us on our YouTube video, The Cooking Cairo. 
We really had so much fun and I hope you enjoy making your chili and making your family really, really happy. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and just remember this, live well, love well, and eat well.